So what are these? Uh, it's just lesson of this. Mm, no. Okay, they said it's schesis, so what do you expect with schesis leading to detachment? Uh, a, a, a retinal break. Okay, so, so these are inner or outer holes? Inner. Hmm? Inner and outer. Oh. What do you think? These are inner holes? Do you see the blood vessel here? Okay. Okay, so usually large, large are outer holes, okay? And what's this here? Inner, Inner hole, okay? So this is a schesis detachment. So it's a retinous degenerative retinous schesis leading to pigmatogenous retinal detachment, okay? Have an outer holes and inner hole. Okay. So, can you have um, a rigmatogenous retinal detachment secondary to retinous cases without inner hole? Hmm? Okay. So, you need the communication between the vitreous cavity and the subretinal space, right? مشعل مشعل الخيال مشعل مشاعل عفوا اوكي سو ذس ا سيليكون اويل بابل اكسلنت اوكي بي هيفي ليكويد هيفي ليكويد فيري فلور ليكويد سو واي ذا سيليكون اويل فلوتس فيري سيمبل فيزكس Specific gravity. Yeah. What specific gravity? Low. Sorry. Low gravity. Yeah. yeah. So it's lower than water, huh? Mm -hmm. So it's lower, uh, less than one. So it floats, and the PFCO sinks down. So, uh, so uh, how how would you treat this? What you will do? What do you think? Is there a problem having silicon oil in the anterior chamber? Yeah, there's a PFCL? risk of IUP. What's that? A risk of IUP. It could raise the IUP. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, cornea decompensation. Sorry? Cornea decompensation. Okay. So you do if it's very small uh, bubbles, you can leave them uh, if you are planning to remove the silicon oil soon, like within one or two months. Like for the PFCL, you can remove these bubbles and slit lamp. You can remove this uh, with 30 gauge needle and slit lamp. You can just aspirate these bubbles. Silicon oil, uh, you shouldn't remove it from the anterior chamber because usually if you get, if you try to remove silicon oil, the silicon oil keep coming from the uh, posterior chamber, from the vitreous cavity. So if you want to remove silicon oil, you need to remove it all from the anterior chamber and from the vitreous cavity. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Muhammad uh, Renazi. Diagnosis posterior macrothermia. How would you make this diagnosis? Uh, from the picture and the uh, tertiary of the vessel. Okay, so basically you see only tertiary of the blood vessels, right? Yes. So, and I told you this an incidental finding, okay? And the rest of the exam is normal. So, can you think of anything else? Something congenital? In the blood vessels only? So this is a congenital venous tortuosity, okay? This is a, um, a quite common, but uh, usually overlooked uh, uh, finding. So what you see, actually you can have 
the veins, arteries, or both, okay? But the most common is the uh, venous tortuosity. And if you can see, only the veins and venules are, are affected. What you see is just tortuosity, and you can see that the veins, as if they are pointing backward to the, to the optic nerve head, okay? So usually this is asymptomatic without any problem. So uh, did you hear about this before? Uh, okay. And if, I mean, if you look for it, you will find it in, in a lot of patients, okay? And uh, the complication, uh, some of you mentioned it uh, correct, the, hmm? No, no, venous tortuosity congenital, who? Okay, so uh, what's the uh, possible complication? Uh, usually uh, it has no complication, but if, if you see any complication from this, usually r little uh, retinal hemorrhages that usually resolve by itself. Sometimes uh, you may have uh, a vascular occlusion. Okay. It's not a CRVO. So the steer macrophthalmia, usually the, the axial length is uh, reduced. Uh, patients usually uh, high hyperopes. And also, you can see folds in the uh, in the macular area. And this patient is really asymptomatic. Okay. I didn't. I'd also, you didn't see much of tortuosity like this. Okay. And you didn't see much. Uh, okay. So the uh, striking findings uh, include uh, hot disk with uh, diffuse uh, capillary dropout, uh, and the fundus will have. Uh, sorry, dropout. Sorry, leakage. Leakage from the small capillaries. Yes. And this is very characteristic of. Uh, it looks like Behja disease. Behja disease. Okay. And the Excellent. fundus you have vitritis. What's that? Vitritis. Okay. Uh, this is a bilateral uh, false eye maculopathy. Mm -hmm. uh, central hypochlorous sensor absent by a ring of high. Sorry? Uh, cent uh, central hypofluorescence surrounded by a ring of hyperfluorescence. Is this a fluorescein angiography? Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, it's uh, autofluorescence, yeah. Okay. Um, what's most likely diagnosis? I would say uh, cone dystrophy. Okay. Uh, false eye, um, Sargard disease. Excellent. Uh, Stargard? What is again Stargard here? No, H uh, goes with the saga. Mm. Hmm? I need FFA to to uh, to see the uh, uh, silent choroid or not. Okay. What is the other st striking feature in in Stargard? Retinal flex. Yeah. See the flex, and due to the uh, hyperotofluorus. Okay. So you didn't see any flex here. So uh, this is a con dystrophy. How would you manage? I think it's a poor, poor prognosis. So I would uh, low vision aids. Uh huh. Uh, Excellent. Family screening. And. So genetic testing and genetic counseling, right? Uh, 
ابراهيم عبيدان Can you hear him? No, there's nothing. Yeah, A is uh, Android streaked, complicated with uh, CMVM. Excellent. So uh, final diagnosis, pseudo uh, xanthoma elasticum. Excellent. Uh, how I treat? First, I have to treat CMVM with uh, injection of anti VGF. Excellent. Then refer patient to general physician for uh, systemic investigation. Any question? Abdullah, Abdullah Gandhi. When Abdullah Gandhi? Omar Al Abbasi. A is uh, optic nerve avulsion. Mm -hmm. B, uh, it's a ocular contusion. Okay. Uh, the zone is zone three because it's posterior to five millimeter from Excellent. the limbs. Any question, Ishra? Excellent. Thank you. Naif, this is Sleiman. This is a picture of uh, myopic fundus. Sorry? A uh, picture of my, uh, showing myopic fundus. Okay. Uh, a, it looks like a uh, lacquer crack. Excellent. Pathology. And uh, B, it looks like RPA atrophy. Yeah, wh what do you call this? Peripapillary atrophy. Hmm? Peripapillary atrophy. Yeah, but it has a name in myopic patients. Myopic? Uh, crescent. Myopic uh, crescent or myopic conus. Excellent. So what what are the lacquer cracks? And Ambrox's membrane. Excellent. Which one is similar to cephaloma? I know this is not staphyloma. Actually, the staphyloma, posterior staphyloma, in, in myopic patients, the whole posterior pole is, is is protruded backward. Okay, so we have ten types of, of staphylomas. Okay, the uh, myopic crescent and the, the myopic degeneration is more common with uh, with staphylomas. Okay, but you didn't see like a staphyloma like this. And are you talking about congenital staphyloma, any optic nerve? Co-retinal staphyloma at accident? Or the no, you mean the staphyloma in myopic patients? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you didn't see them, like you cannot see the, uh, the staphyloma clinically uh, unless it's very small and in one area, like in the posterior pole, you can see the staphyloma itself. But usually we depend on uh, the imaging to see the staphyloma. It will be very obvious with, uh, with OCT, okay? Ultrasound sometimes can show you the staphyloma, okay? But this is document the myopic uh, crescent from, or uh, the uh, myopic conus. It's basically an area that uh, void of retinal tissue and the choroid. So this is why basically what you see here, this is clearer. It's a bare sclera here, okay? And th they have uh, a risk of something, patients with myopic crescent, by the way. CNVM is one, something in the optic nerve. Yeah, excellent. 
so they have high risk of glaucoma and optic nerve damage. Myopic focus cases, this one? Myopic focus cases? With coloboma, I mean. Schises, yeah, myopic fovis schises with the staphyloma. Okay. You may have a staphyloma with an edema, like any other patient, but the schisis is uh, d different. You can see the schisis ca uh, cavities. Yeah, uh, well, it depends on the level of the schisis. At the, at the early stages, you see only schisis, not edema. You can see schisis split, like uh, a clear schisis uh, of the, uh, and also you can see the premacular structure on OCT, like an epiretum membrane. Uh, on the on the OCT, the other thing, if it is more advanced, you can see the foveal detachment with it. So it's a bit uh, qu quite uh, uh, characteristic the OCT for myopic focus cases. In in diabetic macular edema, usually it's like any diabetic macular edema. You see the just the stoid spaces, and that's it. Yeah, uh, I think it's you can. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what was the diagnosis? Schisis? Yeah, maybe you can see it together. Ah, I, I don't remember. So. I mean, the fovea schisis is more very typical, the myobic fovea schisis. Yeah, actually, myobic fovea schisis, always, all the patients, they should have staphyloma. You cannot have a fovea, uh, fovea schisis without a staphyloma. So you should have a myobic, fovea, uh, myobic staphyloma at the beginning, then you will develop uh, myobic fovea schisis. Always. Yeah. Yeah, we can discuss it later. Uh, I need uh, 40 residents. Nasser as Saidi. Ah, you mentioned. Oh, okay, sorry. Come again, please. Okay, so how did you reach the diagnosis? Sorry? You are talking about here? This corresponds to the uh, pigment flag here. Okay. What else? Do you see the uh, hyporeflective cavity here? And involving the outer retina and the left eye? Okay. Which, which type? Type two, okay. So I'm talking about a bilateral disease, right? So what do you see just by clinical? This why I'm, uh, I didn't bring the uh, fluorescein. Just I wanted to make the diagnosis. Even even if you didn't have the fluorescein angiography, sometimes clinically you can reach the diagnosis. Okay. So uh, so what do you see here in the uh, in the fundus? What you can see here the pigment plaque, which is secondary to what? So there is an uh, RP hyperplasia and migration. Okay, what else do you see? 
you see the right angle venule. You can see the uh, loss of the retina transparency or graying of the retina. You can see it here, more obvious. It's usually temporal to the fovea. Do you see this color here? So it's different than here, okay? And more obvious with the autofluorescence, you can see it here. Okay, so in OCT, you can see multiple hyporeflective cavities in the retina. Uh, sometimes it involves the outer retina, sometimes the inner retina. The, the what's called like a cystoid space, usually it's covered with a very thin layer of the ilum. It's called uh, ilum draping, okay, or drape over that covers, roofs the, the cystoid uh, space. And for the terminology, uh, so now we, we see this is a macular telangiectasia with the new uh, terminology, with the new classification, okay? The original classification and terminology by gas was what? Uh, yeah, now it's types, so it's type two, but with the name. So the original name is idiopathic. No, idiopathic, peripovular. This is the original uh, terminology, okay? But now we just say a macular telangiectasia or MACTEL, uh, this is type two. What's type one? Okay, which is similar to, or a mild form of? Coats disease, okay. Do you have type three now? No, okay. Hmm. No, actually there is no C and D. Uh, Actually, here, yeah, so basically, okay, there's a, a lot of details here. So what, first you have the right angle venule, this venule go dives inside the retina, okay? Along this venule, usually you have an RPE hyperplasia and migration, okay? So you have the RPE coming from down under the retina to the surface of the retina, okay? And in its path, Okay, it will make some dis uh, disruption of the of the retinal layers. So th this was what you see here. Okay, this is the area of uh, as if it's like a scar, but it's not a scar, but it's an RP a hyperplasia and migration. Okay. Yeah, usually it's temporal to the phobia. No, this is like uh, because it's just a dark pigmented, so you see it uh, hypoautofluorescent. Okay, but if, uh, if there's any active CMV, usually, actually like to, uh, to uh, name it subretinal uh, new vascularization better than, it's more accurate than choroidal vascular membrane because we think the origin from the retinal side, uh, not from the choroidal side, but this is another discussion. And you see like retinal hemorrhage, you can see fluid around it, okay, and usually patients uh, complain of uh, metamorphopsia, okay? So how do you treat this? Mm -hmm. 